Waking up in the morning and you cannot open your mouth to brush, to eat or even speak is something many of us would rather not think about. Well, Xavier Francis Bagesera went through that for 22 years. This is the home where he lived with his parents. In this very compound was a tree from which he fell and for the next 22 years he could not open his mouth. What happened next, Xavier tells his story today on the show. This is Life Stories. I'm Justine, your host, and I welcome you to the show. The joys of childhood escapades make up many of our memories when as adults, we reminisce and briefly try to recapture the magic of those carefree moments. For Xavier, there will be no fond childhood memories in his life. For as a child, Xavier suffered an accident that made the next 22 years of his life a living nightmare. As a young child, Xavier was living a normal life, going to school, having fun with his friends, and generally enjoying all the games and activities that youngsters do. Until that fateful day when Xavier climbed a mango tree in his father's compound. Hello Xavier, how are you today? I'm okay. How are you, Justin? I'm fine. Most welcome to our home. Thank you. Thank you for hosting us here. Okay. Welcome. Mm. Xavier, tell me about this accident that had you lose your speech for 22 years. It so happened in 1984 and the month was May. I had just climbed the tree just to get some mangoes for me and my young brothers and sisters. And I ended up touching no branch and ended up falling on the ground. How old were you? I was nine. Yes. I was taken to hospital, actually hospital. From where I was nursed, the wounds were taken care of until when I was discharged after six days from that day when I fell from the tree. Going through school without the power of communication plunged Xavier's self-esteem into tatters. Every new dawn was filled with dread at the ordeal that lay ahead. Every new day was filled with terrible pain and oh, the endless visits to hospitals as father, mother and son struggled to find a cure for Xavier. His life was not different from that of a guinea pig as different doctors tried all sorts of treatments to make Xavier open his mouth. This included puncturing a hole in his throat and then promptly closing it up as soon as it became apparent that this was no cure. All the painful procedures proved futile. Xavier's mouth stayed locked fast in a death-dealing grip. When, when did you and your family notice that you were not going to open your mouth to speak again? It took some time to observe it because they all thought that it was just an, a pain that was coming from the wounds that I had got not knowing that I had even got broken bones. The jaws had broke, had got broken, and even the teeth had also blocked. So they all thought that after time, it will be, here, it will be okay, and I will again open the mouth. But in the process of waiting for the wounds and the teeth to be okay, the flesh was growing on the broken jaws because I had got the dislocation of the mandibular. They call it mandibular. They, they joined that, that pivots when someone is opening the mouth. So from that moment, that's when the mouth started closing down gradually. It was a gradual process until when it was opened yes, uh, recently in 2006. So what, what else were you not able to do because of that accident? First of all, opening the mouth was a problem. That is, eating had become a problem. Uh, mouth cleaning, also a problem. Even visiting the dentists because they could not remove any tooth, though I had the pain. Because as you know, someone who doesn't clean the 
mouth very well, you are likely, the germs are likely to affect the teeth. So in the process, when they observe that it has to be re removed, for me it wasn't possible. Yes. What challenged you most during the time when you were going through the aftermath of the accident? Yes, the most challenge that I got was feeding and even talking, like, that is speaking. Mm -hmm. When I, sp I spoke to someone, it wasn't easy for her or him to know exactly what I meant when I speak or when I spoke. So. That was the biggest challenge that I got. And even yeah, as a child, I had to play some games. So I had to keep away from some of the games that would lead me to maybe falling on the ground, someone hitting on my head. So It made you very, very delicate. Yes. Were you able to go to school? Yeah, I was able to be in school mm. because immediately from a hospital, it was holiday, then after the holiday, I joined the rest at school. Mm. I continued the studies, because by then I was in primary two. His faith and wavering, Xavier went through school the best way he could, learning to cope with his disability, surviving on fluids and mountains of pills to ease the pain. So what did the doctors fail to do? How come it took a very long time for you to find a cure? Uh, in the beginning, they never realized that I had got broken jaws and the dislocation. So, whenever I visited the hospital, they thought that maybe I was fearing to open because of the pain that I had got, because I had got the wounds below on the chin, because the teeth had broken, got broken. They had to tear inside the, the cheeks. So they thought that those wounds, when they heal, I will be okay. But I later found that they, I and them found that I could not chew. In three weeks, for me, I had observed that I could no longer eat. That how, how many doctors did you visit to try to find a cure? I visited a number of them. First of all, from Tsubi, where I, we, it all started when I got the accident. I later visited Mulago, that was in 1990. Then in 1993, again in Mulago. And even in Tebo Hospital, I went there. They again referred me to Mulago in 1994. So as you visited different doctors? As you yes. visited different doctors, yes. did you think that you were going to heal? Did yeah. you not give up at some I point? I always had hope that mm. I was going to be healed mm. because it all indicate all indicators were showing that I had to be operated mm. because I had even visited the traditional Awayunzi. Mm. They had tried to open the mouth but all had failed. Mm -hmm. So we all resorted to the operation. The, that operation had to be done by medical doctors. So the, all, the whole hope that I had was to be in Mulago. So I, I tried here and there until when I reached a doctor, Professor Ngano, from which he tried to open the mouth in 2000, uh, in 1996, still I never got the good results. 22 years is a long time yes. without eating, uh, speaking and brushing. Mm. How, did you, how did you live with that every day? Yeah, eating wasn't possible, but it's still everybody has to find a way of living. Mm. I also had to find a way, but the, the technique that I used in all those 20 years was I could get food, smash it, then after smashing it, dissolving it with, into water, it becomes soft. Then I sip like uh, someone uh, taking porridge. And I used even to take porridge together 
porridge mixed with the rice and uh, mil uh, milk. So I used to feed on that most of my time. And even Irish potatoes, yes. How did it affect your life? Um, it affected me in the way that uh, I could not join others, for example, in sports, because I loved sports much of my time. Because I thought that when I'm praying, you never know, my head may be hit somehow and again end in problems. Yet I really know that there was no assistance in Uganda for me. So, was your family supportive? Very supportive. Because many of the times I could feel pain because toothache had become the day to day thing. So I had to get money from there and there. Even I have my aunt, my aunt, she's a nurse. She used to get for me some drugs to kill off the pain. So they, are, they were very supportive. All right. So Xavier, what lesson do we learn from your story? The lesson that we learn from my story is that we should not, not lose hope in whenever we have a problem that goes around us because you, it's difficult to tell in which direction is the help going to come from. So we should always tell our problem to others. Never know, they may have the solution to it. And always to have a belief in God that He will do it for you. Mm. Yes, as He did it for me. Oh Are you angry at the medical system here? The fact that for 22 years you failed to, to find a cure for the yeah. problem? Um, well, I may not say straight that I'm uh, bitter about the medical system because we've got the technocrats. We have them, though they are not in good numbers. They are few. But I think we need to improve. The government has to put in more to improve the systems because the, host, the kind of hospitals that I saw are far better compared to our hospitals. The x-rays that they have they are more advanced than the excellence that I saw in Mbago. Ours, the systems are out. I'm sorry to mention it, but they are out. So there is need to improve on the, on the mechanisms of medical that we have. Be in the technicians, that the doctors, the machines that we are using, and even the way nurses approach to patients need to be improved. So the whole system has to be improved. That's very right. Yes. All right, thank you, Xavier, for talking to us. Thank you for telling us about your 22 years yes. of looking for cure and going through this discomfort of not opening your mouth to do yeah. anything like eating, speaking, or even brushing. Well, and I know welcome. so many people have learned a lot about hope from your story. Thank you for coming. All right, you're welcome. You're still watching Life Stories, and we're going to go into a short break. When we return on the show, we're going to hear from Xavier's father, the man who witnessed, who had to watch his son go through 22 years of not opening his mouth to speak, eat, or even brush. We'll be right back. <laughs> 